Hello, 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 happy Sabbath, and welcome to Chit Chat with the Guthries. Can you believe it? It's episode two. <laughs> you make it sound like it's episode 22. <laughs> We've hit a milestone. <laughs> Welcome to episode two. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let's just say thank you for the support that we received last week and all the nice, lovely comments. And if you shared it with someone, shared it on your timeline, shared it on your status, we see you, we notice you, and we thank you. Right, right, right. <laughs> So, last week we spoke about the versions of the Bible. We spoke about the different variations and, you know, we didn't go into full detail regarding the long list of versions that actually exist. But in our chat, we discussed, you know, what principles to use when actually selecting a version, right, Harun? Right. And the main principle that you explained to us was to ensure that we're using word for word translations and not paraphrasing, especially because paraphrasing goes off the writer's thoughts and understanding of what was originally written. So you have recommended to our listeners to take on the word-for-word word translations so if it is that you are currently reading a word-for-word word translation and it, it's not one of the four that Harun recommended last week or was it five was it four or five it was four king james new king james nasb and esv so just mm, four just, okay just check out episode one to get the breakdown yeah so if it is that you're reading something else apart from those four and you know y- you are convinced that it's word for word well, probably you think it's word for word, and it's not word for word. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> we read can the comments. Tell us we can, we in can the answer. comments. <laughs> All right, so this week we are, you know, so now that you know how to find the proper version or what version to use, now we want to, to kind of like bring you up a, 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 another scale. So this week we are talking about her own Bible, Bible reading. Yeah. Bible reading. And also, we'll talk about the difference between Bible reading and Bible study. But majority of the chat will be about Bible, Bible reading. reading. Right. You know, <laughs> exciting topic. It's so exciting. Woohoo! Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So, what's the difference between Bible reading and Bible study? Is there a difference between Bible reading and Bible study? Because I can read my textbooks, you know, and I feel like I could go and do an exam. And I don't feel like I did study it. Well, I guess, well, I guess if you're paying enough attention while reading, it, mm. it sort of does a lot of the work. While, for you while while they're while they're studying okay mm. i guess well, i guess some of, some of the, re- the, the, the reasons that that our textbook work for us and preparing for exam is that you would have sat through the course mm. you would actually gone to class that you registered for it's supposed to have gone supposed to have gone to class <laughs> you registered for and so the, with the textbook you don't you'll have actually know what the textbook is mm. and have an idea where the topics are in the textbook mm. so when, when that you're preparing for the exam you can mm. just go to that part of mm. the textbook and you know, and and read it. And, I you get know, you. Make notes and mm-hmm. you get the principles and so on. So, but Bible reading, Bible study doesn't work like that. Okay. Because we're not so we're not we're not we're not so familiar with the Bible to be able to just go to here and then and then you know I pull information and I go to there, pull information and put it together. We're not yet that familiar because you know after a while we're gonna get there, right? Right. So, so to to overcome to overcome that hurdle, the familiarity gap, which is essential to do Bible study, is Bible reading. Bible reading, Bible reading does that. So it does, but a, then it does a lot if, of heavy lifting. If you lifting. want that kind of um, um, familiarity, wouldn't you have it have to be like reading the Bible for like, for like ten years, fifteen years? Not necessarily ten years, fifteen years, but like over and over, because after one reading through, oh, well, I don't know. Unless you have a brain like her own. But if you have a brain like mine, uh, we're gonna scratch off from recording. So, um, right. So, no, I'm not finished. The familiarity. So you have a brain it, it comes like... through consistency. It comes through consistency. It comes through consistency. All right, fine. 
Yeah. Okay. Consistency. So the, the, the idea with Bible reading is... Um, being consistent. Is, is being consistent. So it, it makes you familiar with the Bible. Mm-hmm. And it develops a habit of consistency mm-hmm. in you. Okay. And and it also it also builds your knowledge base. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of things you learn in Bible reading. But most of the time you don't know mm-hmm. until you do until you get further in a Bible reading. So when you're reading maybe your third, fourth, fourth book, that's mm-hmm. the time now the things from the first and second book starts to pop in. And, and they become polished. So the more you read, the new read helps to cement and refine and polish what you the have read previously. Read. Mm. So, so it, it and it, as I say, build, builds your attention, builds the knowledge base, creates a habit of consistency. You know, it, it really, really encourages, you know, it, it's, it's very motivating, mm-hmm. very motivating because, you know, you are, and, and also it, you know, it immerses you in the, into the world of the Bible. Mm. And, and it, you are introduced to the different Types of literature found within the pages of the Bible. Mm. I mentioned this briefly last week, but we're, yeah. we're, we're able to go into it. Um, you know, there are two categories of the writings in the Bible. There's prose, and then there's poetry. Mm-hmm. But Bible poetry is not like English poetry. It's not, it's not like um, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Why would you go mm. for that one? The yeah, wine of the roses all, are red, violets yeah. are blue. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, right. Wow! Yeah. All right. So it's not like it's not like roses the, are red. Yeah, it's not like English rhyming poetry. <laughs> Bible poetry is very different. There's there's repetition of ideas and so on. So, anyways, the, so you find as you're doing a Bible reading that the book of the books of Job and Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, mm-hmm. are not written using the same type of language. The same you know, the same symbols as the books of Exodus and First Samuel. And Leviticus. And, you know, Leviticus and, <laughs> and the kings. Mm, and judges. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, and judges. So, so and, and, and so, you, so you find that there's pros and poetry. So, you, so you, you now become familiar now with the different, you know, the different um, expectations of the books of the Bible as well. Mm. Because, you know, the, how you approach the book of Ecclesiastes is not the same way you approach the book of Genesis. Mm-hmm. Right? And and you're gonna find that even with the prose books, there is a difference. As you are reading now, you you realize that there's so much just narratives. They mm-hmm. tell you this was done, then then that, followed by this, and then that. So sequential, like Genesis one, and you're gonna you're gonna find that there that there are other others are more historical. Mm. So like Joshua mm-hmm. and First Samuel, because Joshua gives the history of how Joshua and the people conquered. The ter- initial territories in Canaan. Mm-hmm. For Samuel, going to give you the history of, of, of near to the time of the monarchy, the history of Saul, the history of David, and so on. So, so when you learn, when you learn as you're reading and you realize these differences, your eye, quote unquote, becomes becomes a lot more, a lot more attuned, and and you 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 learn. You're able to identify. Right. You you know you identify the things. You know, identify the things quicker and. As I say, your expectation, you know, becomes, you know, becomes more aligned to the biblical text and so on. So the, so the reading, the reading really, 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 really helps. Really, right, so really how, helps. how do we start reading? Do we just pick up the Bible and start from Galatians, Ephesians? Do we <laughs> jump a, down to Matthew, that's, that's come again question. to Daniel, jump up back to Haggai? Ah. <laughs> well, you know, Bible books, man. That's good. So Excuse the, me? The, <laughs> for, so, the shade. Uh, no, no, come on. Um... So Bible reading, Bible reading, if I could put a definition, is the systematic, consistent, deliberate attempt to to peruse the subject matter of the Bible. I'm literally listening to you and I want to bust out a laugh, but I know my mother is listening and she's gonna tell me that I take everything for a joke. So you know, like when you get um a different let's just pause. Ma- this is just a laugh. Let's just take a light moment out of this, right? So you know, like when you're listening to, like, you know, like you're reading some, um, some, some intellectual um, research paper, and you get a definition, and you know, Webster's <laughs> International. So that definition is from Go Through. All right. Side side note over. So as we were saying, folks, yes. So by reading is delivered. By reading is systematic. By reading is consistent. So because all those elements you want, and and when, when you you are actually reading the Bible, all right? Mm-hmm. Actually reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. We, re- we recommend a well. You can use a soft copy. You can use a hard copy. But the idea is that just be consistent. consistent. Okay. Just be consistent with it. So right, so be consistent. Yeah, so be consistent. Be deliberate. Deliberate. Okay. And pay then, attention. 
Mm, but but then how do I know what order to go in? Um. All right. So so you so right, let's say it this way: there are Bible reading plans out there that that others are, that others would have made Bible reading plans. Bible reading plan for teenagers. Bible reading plan for men. Bible reading plan for women. Bible reading plan for single people. For and if you are listening and you're here, you can check in our bio for a free Bible reading plan from Chit Chat with the Guthries. That's right. <laughs> so the so and then you know of course of course you have the, you have the Bible in a year mm-hmm. where you can t- start from January one and go to December thirty one and, and you'd have gone through all six six of the Bible. Oh, okay. If those don't don't you know those those don't vibe with you, mm-hmm. uh, is that a word? You know you can you can. Uh, it is a word, but it's not something that I feel like you should be using. Yeah. But proceed. Yeah, proceed. If you don't vibe. Right, you. right. Um, right. So. It don't, it don't resonate with you. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah, it don't resonate with you. You can develop your own plan. You can develop okay. your own plan. And while Bible reading is systematic, while Bible reading is consistent, but going to be deliberate, it, it, it does, you do not have to go in the order in which the books are found in the Bible in English. Okay. You can start anywhere and you can mix and match it. So you okay. can start with the book in the New Testament. When you finish with that, you can go to the book in the New Testament. Right? In the Old Testament. And yeah, New Testament and the, and then Old Testament, right. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah, brain fire. Focus. So so y- you you can do it like that. But the idea is is start and follow through. And follow you through. You want to be consistent. Okay. So perhaps I have, can I give a suggestion? Go perhaps, ahead, no problem. Perhaps. 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 Perhaps you want to start with the gospels. Well, read, read well about Jesus. But, but they can also look at our, our Bible reading plan that's in the comments. Yeah, read about Jesus. No? And, um, Pro- but, but 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 perhaps you know you you know you know you know what else you can do? You can you can start to read the prophetic book. You can start with Daniel, the twelfth chapter. When you finish Daniel, you can go to Revelation. I just don't agree with that recommendation. Chapters. If this, this just, is my first 20, time reading the Bible, no, but no, but uh, th- it's no, not, but it's not only okay. If, if it is that you're listening and you're not whatever judges, you do, don't start with the book of Judges. All right, it, yeah, you, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll 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 understand when you get there. <laughs> Right, so but so perhaps perhaps, perhaps perhaps you want to read the book of Moses first. So you want to do Genesis, then Exodus, then Leviticus, then Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay, you know fine. maybe you want to do that. Right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to do that. Daniel you know Luke? maybe you want to read no. the major prophets first. So you want to read Isaiah, then Jeremiah, then Ezekiel, yes, then that's Daniel. Strong man. No, you're only saying that because because you would have read them, right? What's why not read them? You know. So 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 yeah, so, so the, the idea is, right, the idea is that you want to be consistent. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, how I'm looking at it. So there are various ways to start. How I'm looking at it, though, I'm not disagreeing that there are various ways to start. But for someone who is listening, who have been experiencing, you know, challenges being consistent in reading, challenging challenges following the plan, I would not recommend them starting with right, that. For all, for all the single ladies listening, read the book of Esther. Start with Esther. You love it. Oh my gosh. And then, and then you know, for the for the for, for the young men who are listening and you want a recommendation, Samuel. First Samuel. Oh my gosh. Right? First Samuel. Right? So there's a Bible reading plan for men and for women if you're single and if you're married. Oh, so if you're married, where was that? Song of Solomon. As a woman or as a man. Song of Solomon, read it with your wife. Oh. Yeah. Are <laughs> you gonna give us one for the woman? <laughs> so the idea the idea is that you, you want a Bible reading? So you want to you want to own a Bible, mm-hmm. you want to use your Bible, you want to read it, read you want it. to be deliberate, develop a plan, be, be consistent, be systematic, be mm-hmm. consistent. Um, um, what about finding an accountability partner? How how is that with reading? Okay, Bible reading. What what's your take on that? Can I can I just shamelessly plug this before I answer the question? So Jeremiah fifteen sixteen says, "Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart." I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. And you'll find as you do, do your Bible reading that you'll have this experience that Jeremiah speaks of. Mm. For accountability, um, if you don't have somebody to read with, you know, maybe perhaps you, you know, not your Sabbath school class or, or your or your you know your, your church study group or, or your friend or your friend or your, in a WhatsApp group or whatever, you know, you can put it on your status. You know? Genesis one. And then tomorrow, Genesis two. And the next day you put, you know, three things from Genesis three. Don't make fig leaf apron. If you're Eve, don't want it from Adam. Don't talk to snakes. In quotes. With the snake emoji. And then four, you know, you you know, you can you know you can make graphics, you can, you know, send a text from 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 it to somebody. 
Um, you know, you can put it up. So the, the, the idea is that you want to you want, you want to put it out there. You want to share what you are reading. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So now you've just gone on to like a different level. So now we are, we're being consistent. We're trying to, um, you know, read through. We've selected a particular plan. We're reading every day. So now we should also share it. Yeah, yeah. Put it in your status. Okay. Put it in your status. Put it in your status. Mm-hmm. All that, right. That, so that, that, that helps. You know, that helps. Any final words? Bible is fun. Um, mm-hmm. You will you will like it when you when, when when you get into it. Um, and you know, this was something that I've personally sometimes wondered about. But no, especially for the past three or you know probably four years, being consistent in reading the Bible. After a while, when you just start, you, you will not connect the dots. But after a while and the more you read, the dots will automatically connect. I'm not there as yet where, you know, like for you bi- biblical scholars where, you know, you're able to pinpoint that, you know, this this verse was mentioned in Leviticus 9 verse 12. Leviticus 9 or verse 12? Leviticus 9 verse 12. You know, I'm not there yet, but I can let you know yeah, fact, that I read fact, this before. Fact check her in the comments if there's a verse 12 in Leviticus 9. <laughs> So, so I didn't hear that. Yeah, so I think, <laughs> My what, gosh, man. I think what Shani is saying, I think what Shani is saying is that you know, the, the, the more the more you read at first, you know, you're just reading. Mm-hmm. After a while, after a while, when you're reading, you, you can start, identify. You like, you know, I've read this before, you're, or you know, I know of something this place similar. Put, right? This sound familiar. Right. This person turned up already. This place turned up already. Right. This action was said already. And you see that that's the beauty of it. That's that is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. Because it's not mm-hmm. just our natural human mind making making that connection. The Bible is a sacred book, inspired by the Holy Spirit through the Holy Prophets. Mm. And so as we are reading it, we ought to connect with the Holy Spirit as well. Amen. So so it's so, important so, so to actually pray. Right. So Bible reading is to be deliberate. Mm-hmm. To be intensely, you know, be a, be a deliberate personal choice. It's to be systematic. It's to be consistent. You want to actually spend time in the Bible, mm-hmm. and you also want to make it a matter of prayer. prayer. You know, some something that you that you pray about, and as you do that, you will extract much more from the reading than than you would expect. You know, God has a way of surprising you. Mm-hmm. God has a way of surprising you, and and you know, perhaps perhaps um, if, sure. if there's anybody who had an experience like me, you know, one day took up a challenge. I'm going to read Ezekiel. Brethren, read it, fell asleep all the way through. You just persist, just persist, just mm-hmm. persist. So probably you're listening, you know, you don't have to be an Adventist. Once you have the desire to want to learn more from the Bible, mm. probably currently you're reading and you realize that I cannot get through a chapter a day. Don't worry, you are not alone. Everyone has experienced yeah. that. Yeah. But probably you need to... Start with a verse, man. Right. Or change the book. Yeah, probably re- the book yeah. that you're starting yeah, yeah, is just yeah. too heavy. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, per- per- perhaps. Yeah. So, so you can probably you know go to look at Mark or mm-hmm. you can look at John. Read something a little bit lighter, man. Right. Um, Read something funny. Yeah. Expand. Expand. Yeah, move. Move out of the Psalms. Move out of the Psalms. You know, go to the Proverbs. Um, mm-hmm. You know, go to Obadiah. One chapter. One chapter. You probably have to look in the table of context to find where Obadiah wow, is. Shame. But just because you know where the Book of Haggai was in the Bible, all right? No, I'm not saying that. It's just that those are not very popular books that people read. Yeah. You understand? You, when you come and talk jo- about, you know, you're reading the Bible, you're not going to hear Jonah, Habakkuk. Uh, Jonah has three chapters. You, you can, you know. I'm not you throwing can, any shade. You, 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 you can start there. You can start there. So, you know, switch it up. Switch it up, change it up. But the idea is that you want to do it. You want to do it every day. And, and, and we should point out as well that, yes, it's going to be systematic. It's going to be deliberate. You want to be consistent. You want to make it a matter of prayer. You want to actually spend time in your Bible. Study your day. If you're not a morning person, don't play a hero. You're not necessarily about you as in who you are. Yeah, you're who you are in mm-hmm. personality. You know, right. you mm-hmm. know, if you're not a morning person, don't play a hero. You want to do Bible reading at the time that you're most alert. Mm. You want to do that, do that time, time you're most alert. Morning work for some, mm-hmm. may not work for you. Something just popped right. in my head that even as we um, come so to it, an so end. So do it afternoon and evening then. What about... What's your view, Haroon, on audio Bibles for this um, particular, you know, for, would it, would it, um, well, well, you want to use it to supplement your reading, but, but, mm. but don't let the audio Bible be the reading. The reading. Oh, so you're saying that like, if I, re- if I physically read the book, 
like let's say I read it in the morning, like during the day I could have it playing. Right, right. Or like another day I right. could have it playing. Oh, right. okay. But, but it, not it, just having it playing. Yeah, don't take away your active personal involvement in the matter because that is where you get the blessing. Okay. That's where, that's where you get the blessing. You can use the other Bible supplement. Mm -hmm. but you want to be engaged yourself, yourself in it. All right. So thank you for listening. Let us know how your Bible reading journey is going in, yeah. the, in the comments. Yeah. And if you are currently on a Bible reading journey, tell us what book you are reading and tell us how it's been going. We are currently reading First Kings. We just finished reading Judges. Another day and another time. I'll tell you about that experience. But yep, this is where we end this week's episode of Chit Chat with the Guthries. Remember to share it with a friend, not just your Adventist friend, but any friend that you have. Share it on your status. We'd really appreciate the support and see you. Not see you. We'll be back next week. Friday. You will hear us next week, Friday, for another episode of Chit Chat with the Guthries. Bye bye. Take care. <laughs>